My journey into flamenco began with an aunt from Spain visiting my family in Malta, where I was born. Tia Margarita came and stayed with us every summer. She would cook for us, and while cooking, would listen to flamenco and dance around the kitchen. During the day, I was studying art and art restoration at a monastery, listening to Gregorian chanting, but when I arrived home, the house was full of flamenco guitar music. As I grew up, I studied music, drums mainly, and then moved on to classical guitar. Although I loved classic guitar music, it did not fulfill me the way flamenco did. One day, after I saw Pepe Bichuela playing, I decided this was the music I wanted to play. Pepe is one of the great flamenco masters and one of Spain's finest contemporary guitarists. He belongs to a flamenco dynasty of gypsies, started by his grandfather known as Abichuela el Viejo. I asked him to teach me, but he refused, saying guitar is too hard. This was in all places in Toronto, Canada, where I was studying graphic design. When Pepe finished his stay in Toronto, he said to me, if you are serious about learning flamenco guitar, come to Spain and I will teach you. I was 17 years old, and after three months, I showed up at his house in Granada, Spain, and asked for lessons. I studied with Pepe and other gypsy masters off and on in Spain for 12 years. We studied rhythm and more rhythm, respect for gypsy culture and the fine art of improvisation within these complex, mysterious rhythms. In the meantime, I traced my family roots in Spain all the way back to the 1500s, from Cadiz to Tunisia, and to Malta and the path of the Conversos during the Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Edict of 1492 resulted in a massive ethnic cleansing in both Spanish and Portuguese society. Many of these converts, known as conversos, assimilated fully into the Iberian society, but a significant segment maintained a facade of Christianity, while still clandestinely retaining as much of their Jewish beliefs and rituals as possible. Over the next few centuries, many of these crypto Jews settled in Western Europe. The migration of the Sephardic diaspora from Spain and Portugal heralded a dual process of return to lands uninhabited by Jews for centuries and a return to ancestral practices that did not have the benefit of a chain of tradition to faithfully transmit them. Today, the conversos have spread throughout the world and I feel that my journey from Malta to Canada with the added benefit of discovering flamenco on this journey has led me to profoundly understand what it is like to leave something behind while bringing the music of flamenco with me. When I would return back to Canada every year, I noticed that more people had heard of flamenco and were learning to love it. At the time I got serious about it, flamenco was not popular, and when I announced to my father, a professional soccer player, that I was going to become a flamenco guitarist, his reaction was, great, you and the other man who likes it should do okay. This motivated me even more. A few years later, it was perhaps 1979, I saw Paco Lucia perform for the first time ever. I had been listening to his music since 1973, but this was the first time I'd heard him live. There was no looking back. This is what I was going to do. I made flamenco guitar in my life, touring with dance companies, composing, and finally recording. After 25 years, I produced six CDs of original guitar music, heavily steeped in tradition. Eventually, I was asked to teach at York University. The opportunity gave me a chance to spread the word of flamenco to young people. Aside from students at the university, I teach others who have a love of guitar and flamenco. Such a person is Mr. Harold Levy. During one of his lessons, we started to work on Taranta, a gypsy rhythm from Sacromonte, Granada, Spain. Immediately, Harold said, this reminds me of Col Nidre. I had no idea what he meant. As soon as he left, I started to research Col Nidre. I was fascinated by the simple haunting melody that was spiritual and moving, like flamenco, but not. I then listened to many Col Nidres performed by Max Bruch, Safardi, and countless others. The diversity was amazing. At Harold's next lesson, he brought up the Col Nidre subject again. I explained that now I knew what that was and how moving the melody is. He then suggested I compose a flamenco Col Nidre. This set me off on a six-month journey of listening and comparing Col Nidre to flamenco, digging for the right flamenco palo that would be workable. Palo literally means a stick, 
as this is what was used to keep rhythms in the early days of flamenco. After months of working and trying different palos, it dawned on me my eureka moment. Colnidre is the root of several of the cantijondo that compromise the heart of flamenco song. Cantijondo is the deepest, most serious form of flamenco, and a great flamenco singer equates his art with speaking directly to God. Looking closely at the roots of Cantijone, one cannot help but find Jewish overtones in the music with reference to the wailing songs and rhythmic repetition of words and the current of sadness. Many believe that flamenco is closely linked to Sephardic synagogue music. Musicologists have observed an even much closer link to Ashkenazi synagogue music especially to the Hazanat or highly controlled style of Eastern Europe, whose scales and modulations remind one remarkably of flamenco singing. It is up for debate that this music may go all the way back to the singing of the Levites of the temple, but one cannot dismiss the Mediterranean source with Arabic music and the influence of the Moors, who were in Spain for over 500 years. The true roots of flamenco are ancient and have taken centuries for it to evolve into its present state, to look in the origins of flamenco, one must go back to the period from the Muslim conquest of 711 to the expulsion of the Jews and the defeat of the last Muslim enclaves in 1492. The period in between witnessed an extraordinary golden age. Through the intermixing of Jewish, Muslim, and Christian inhabitants, this term convivienza refers to the creative mix of ideas, art, poetry, and architecture. The only ones excluded were the Gitanos or gypsies who lived on the fringes of society. When the gypsies arrived in Andalusia around 1425, they were also persecuted. They lived in the outskirts of society and often sought refuge in remote mountainous areas. The Gitanos blended with the Jews and the Moors where they could hear cantors in the synagogues, emirs in the temples, and of course, Christian church music from the cathedrals. The Gitanos have been fundamental form today's flamenco as they orally pass the songs to each new generation and by repeated performances within their social communities have forged flamenco into this present day state. Cantijondo is comprised of many different palos that I was interested in drawing from for Michael Nidre. The Segrias is a deep, expressive style considered among the most important in flamenco. Tientos and Taranta are slow, melancholy, and profound, while Soleá Polvillerías has the roots in Soleares, considered the mother of all flamenco song, with the pace and drive of a Bullerías. Armed with 25 years of flamenco playing and the worst winter in the history of Toronto, I locked myself up Considering the weather divine intervention, I proceeded to compose my Kol Nidri. The most important thing I wanted to achieve, besides being true to Kol Nidri and being true to flamenco, that I wanted to retain the improvisational aspect of flamenco music. I have written my Kol Nidri in sections or modules that can be performed in any order the artist feels compelled to do. I feel this will result in different versions with the freedom for the performer, whether he is a classical or flamenco guitarist. It is important to me that the guitarists, other than me, will be interested in performing and sharing this Kanura Kol Nidre. I recorded my Kol Nidre at Nico Jolette's studio, the Church of the Bon Vivant. Nico is a composer and musician, as well as being an expert at the art of recording and engineering. I felt really comfortable and pleased within the warm and natural sound that was captured by Nico. I had the added advantage that Nico has composed his own Kol Nidre, and he had a deep understanding of this ancient melody. I'll be eternally grateful to Mr. Harold Levy for introducing me and encouraging me to undertake this journey through hundred years of music full of passion, happiness, and redemption. <laughs> 